just want to thank you for this day. Lord, today is Palm Sunday, and I can only imagine the way the Lord felt as he understood that his prophetic season was about to manifest, Father. The prophetic call that was placed upon his life was soon to come to pass, Father God. But yet, he still went forward, Father. He still completed the task, Father God. And that's what my prayer is for each and every one of us, Father, that as we understand the prophetic call that is on our life, Father, may we strive each and every day to fulfill our kingdom purpose, Father. Lord, I just ask that you have your way in this house, Holy Ghost. Lord, I ask, Lord, let your supernatural power just invade this house, Father God. Lord, unleash the mighty angels, Father God, as they begin to battle and war, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father. Lord, let our hearts and let our minds, Lord, be open, Father God, to receive the word of truth, Father God. And when truth comes, Father God, we know that we would be enlightened by the word, Father God. And when we're enlightened by the word, it's because you're calling for us to change, Father God, because you don't want us to be the same. Because how can we fulfill, how can we fulfill our prophetic call if we're not willing to change, Father God? So Lord, we ask you, Holy Ghost, come. Come, Holy Ghost. And just invoke us to change, Lord, so that your will can be done on earth as it is in heaven, Father God. I humbly ask these things, Father God, in Jesus' name and all God's people say, amen, amen, amen. amen. Well, uh, before, before we get into it, I, I have to, and I, and I said, Lord, you know, I know this might be a little tacky. But I have to give a couple of shout outs. First of all, again, thank pastor and mom. Thank you guys for allowing me this opportunity. But there's just been some folks that's just uh, that I've been able to watch, you know, and thank God for Christian television. Amen. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I'm telling you that is Christian television is so key in my life. Uh, as you know going through all types of changes and going through all types of different things to be able to flip the channel on Darren yeah. and to see the man or the woman of God coming forth with the word of truth right there in the comfort of your home and to be able to receive that and allow God to make those changes necessary for spiritual growth I thank God for that and uh, so I have to say, you know, and they may never see this, you know, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But I got to give a shout out to Bishop T.D. Jakes. I'm telling you, that man is bad. I, that, that is one of my favorite, absolutely favorite preachers in the world. And he is just hearing him and listening to him has just been a tremendous help, you know, in my life. I love Pastor Steve Furtick out in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. That's a bad young cat, too, coming up on the scene. Uh, you know, the Joyce Myers, and uh, got, got to love them. Dr. Michael Youssef out of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, I ride with him every morning, you know, listening to him. So all these great, great, great men and women of God that God has placed at our exposal. Uh, I mean, what a blessing. I said, what a blessing, church, to be able to, to experience God in so many different forms and fashion and experience God so, through so many different types of ministers. What a blessing. And it just lets us know how big our God is. That our God ain't small, right, Darren? He ain't locked up in no box somewhere. He's still the creator of the universe. He's still sitting on the throne. He's still all-powerful. He's still almighty. He's still all-knowing. And isn't it something that someone, such a supernatural uh, uh, being, could be so intimate? <laughs> Woo! That's bad right there. You got to call that bad. That you can just throw the stars out and name them all one by one and yet come down to his shining star named Willie Tillman and say, boy, I love you. <laughs> oh, y'all better come on with it this morning because I'm happy, amen. I'm blessed, amen. 
Oh, we had to fight the good fight to get here, but now we're here and the devil's in trouble. <laughs> I hope y'all ready to receive the word. Amen. Now, the last time we talked, we were talking about the power of the prophetic purpose. Amen. And God would really bless that. I mean, I, I was just kind of just I felt like I was just a kid just standing back watching, you know, but he did such a fine job, you know, just explaining and sharing and and putting that word out there. And we just want to kind of continue on that same note. But I am going to tie in some things I'm going to tie in because today is Palm Sunday. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So uh, let's just pick up, you know, and where we left off was in Romans chapter eight. And, you know, of course, we were breaking that down. But here's the key right here. When we sum up Romans eight verses five through eight and 10 through 13, and we're not going to read it again because we're going to move forward. But here's the thing. If we live our lives in broken pieces, we will not be able to fulfill the prophetic call of the kingdom purpose on our lives. We will not be able to do it. See, when you see God, I know we're finite, right? We're all finite and we're, and we're working and we're striving towards, you know, understanding God and drawing closer to God and wanting to be more intimate with God. But the thing about it is we have to make sure that we keep in mind what Ephesians says is that we're still seated with God in heavenly places. Yeah. So therefore, we can see him a little different from that that particular point of view but if I'm viewing God in my broken state if I'm viewing God in my beat down state then I'm not going to be able to to, to uh, inspire or I'm not going to be able to raise up and see him as I properly should does that make sense yes. and so if I'm not seeing him right I know he's seeing me right, but if I'm not seeing him right, then how am I going to rise up, Darren? And how am I going to fulfill the prophetic call that he has on my life? How am I going to do that if I'm not seeing him correctly? Amen? So somebody need to put on your Holy Ghost glasses this morning or pop in them contacts because we got to make sure we're seeing this great God correctly because your purpose, everybody say purpose. purpose. Come on, say purpose. purpose. Your purpose is very important. Why you think he created you? Did he just put you here on earth for no reason? Did he just put you here just to take up space? No, he had a specific design. He had a specific call. He had a specific reason for each and every one of us being here on this earth. And it's your job. See, see, we want to put everything on God and God does a whole lot of stuff for us. But sometimes we just got to tighten up our belt, put on our boots, lace up them straps and pursue God. Amen. 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 That's how that's how it works. OK, now listen to now listen to this quote by my man T.D. Jakes. Watch this. He says, how can we go and not see the overall purpose of God? It's because we look at God's purpose in pieces instead of looking at his purpose from God's holistic view and his strategic plan. You are a strategic plan here on the earth. Amen. And if there's a strategic plan, then the plan needs to be carried out. The plan must be implemented. So if I'm not pursuing God, then how am I going to implement that plan? How am I going to fulfill the plan? Come on, touch your neighbor and say, I got the plan. Come on, you got the plan. It's, see, see, when you accepted Christ, the plan was already put in you. But what, thank you, Holy Ghost. But what the Holy Ghost is trying to do is he's trying to work that plan out in your life. Amen. And if I don't yield to that, if I keep putting up the hands and saying stop or whatever, you know, however they say it to the hand, whatever, then you're blocking and you're impeding the plan. And God's like, I'm not going to make you. God already did his part. So just imagine, go back with me again. Here it is, Palm Sunday, and Jesus knew that he was about to step into a whole nother dimension. 
I don't want to get too far ahead, but he was about to, to, to step into some things that he was not even himself as God was not familiar with. And see, that's why we have to see this thing correctly because, because once you're able to see how precious this gift called salvation is and how precious is the blood of Jesus and how precious is my life upon the earth, you would spend every waking moment trying to figure out, Lord, tell me what it is you want me to do. Come on now. But, you know, and I'm just as guilty. We get a little lazy, don't we? Come on now, let's be real. We get a little lazy. We get a little lackadaisical. And, and we, and the fire which should be there to pr passionately pursue our purpose, it just fizzles out. And then we wonder, where's the power in the house? Where, where is the prophecies being fulfilled in the house, Darren? Where is the supernatural power being manifested with signs and wonders and miracles? And why isn't this manifesting in the house? Why isn't it manifesting in my life? I tell you, uh, sometime this week, and I tell you, it was, a, it was just like, man, you know, boy, Lord, this, these battles get a little harder and harder, Lord. And God says, son, I'm still with you, boy. I'm still in your corner. I still got a call on your life, but you got to take time and get on your knees before me. And so and you need to get plugged in. Yes. See, see, it's just like anything else. If 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 you don't plug it in, it ain't going to work. Like Pastor said, stay plugged in. So I had to get on my knees. I had to speak in that out of that blue book. I don't know how many times this week. I had to I had to call on the name of Jesus, and then not just call on Jesus. I had said, "Okay, Lord, I know that you're Jehovah Jireh, my provider. I know that you're Jehovah Sith Canoe, Father God. I know that you're Jehovah Majin." And I'm just running it down the line because you said, "Call on my name." He said, "With the moment you call on me, watch this, watch this, watch this." He said, "Call on me and." I I will answer you, watch this, and show you great and mighty things. Come on now. He said, I will show you great things, things you can't even comprehend, things you don't understand. So when you're looking at the man that's going through, all you're seeing is the man that's going through. But the man is going through once he calls. We got him, Papa? Once he calls upon the name of of Jesus yes. then that supernatural power is being released amen. in his guts amen that supernatural power is renewing this man's mind amen so yeah he might he might he might get a little low and he might get a little tired and he might come oh Lord how how am I gonna make it through this day Lord you just you just see what just happened there you just see what they just said to me you just see what they just did to me Lord and, and, and but but I'm coming to the cross Lord and I'm calling upon on your name Jesus and you told me if I call upon your name that you would give me something that you would help me and you would be there for me amen see that's the kind of kingdom purpose in which we need to fulfill in our lives amen so that we can go on amen because it ain't gonna get no easier it ain't going to get no easier. I, I mean, I know some of y'all, y'all got it like that, you know what I'm saying? And, and y'all cool and cold chilling. I know some of y'all got it like that. But some of us, we got to scrap for everything. We got to fight for every breath. We got to fight for every step. We got to fight for every praise. Hallelujah. But we're going we, we, we gonna to still throw them dukes up. And we're going to still swing them blows. Uh, don't throw them bows, you know what I'm talking about. And we're not going to give up. We don't give up. You hear me, Darren? We don't give up. And we don't quit because there's, oh, I got to tell you this testimony. This was so cool. So I went to Walmart the other day and uh, did my little shopping. I was getting ready to pay the cash lady. And then you know how they switch uh, the people that run the registers, right? So this was so cool. So I guess the one lady, she's kind of seen me there, you know, all kinds of times. She said, well, God bless you, son. I said, yeah, ma'am. God bless you, ma'am. And then the next lady came and she said, well, God bless you, son. And I said, God bless you, ma'am. And we started talking, you know. And we started talking. And then we started talking about that resurrection power. 
And she said, oh boy, don't get me started. I said, oh, I'm going to get you started. What about that resurrection power? How can we die when we got resurrection life in us? How can we die when we got the glory in us? How can we die when we got the power in us? And she just threw up her hands and went, ooh, and started dancing around in a little way, in a little boot. <laughs> And I said, oh. I said, man, don't get me started now. <laughs> I said, don't get me started, man. She said, ooh, and she was just doing her little dance. And she kept doing her little dance, and she's supposed to be taking my money, you know. <laughs> but she <laughs> And it was it and it was it was amazing. Watch this. It was just amazing because Jesus says, when I'm lifted up, I'm going to draw. And right in that moment, right in that particular time and place and space, we were drawn to Jesus and the glory of God just showed up between two believers conversating about God. And bam, the glory of God fell right there in Walmart. Amen. Oh, I said, oh, thank you, Lord. I needed that right there, Lord. I said, I needed that, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen? Are y'all getting something out of this so far? Now watch this quote by my man Stephen Furtick. He says, oh, I, oh I, strap on your boots. Here we go. And watch it. He says, the reason why you lost your purpose is because you misplaced your passion. <laughs> oh, do I need to say that again? Do I need to repeat myself? Watch this now. He said, he said, oh, that, that's a bad boy up there in Charlotte. I love that cat. He said, the reason why you lost your purpose is because you misplaced your passion. Let's let that sink in. Let that sink in. How many times when the Holy Spirit knocks on the door of our heart saying, are you sure that this is the right thing to do? Are you sure this is what I would have you to do? Because you're not going to fulfill your purpose because you misplaced your passion. You done put that passion somewhere else where that passion should be focused on me. And how many of us, me included, have been guilty, amen, of misplacing my passion? Come on now. Can we be real about that? So, so, and then we wonder why, again, it goes back to why aren't Christians fulfilled in their Christian walk? Let's just talk about the basic walk. Let, let, let's exclude all the blessings and everything else. Let's just talk about the walk. How are you doing in your walk, Christian? And I'm not telling you to show me hands or anything, but I'm just asking the question. And with that being said, concerning your walk, in your walk, are you fulfilling your kingdom purpose? And you can stand up and say, I'm fulfilling my kingdom purpose because I know what that is. But if you ask the average Christian, they might not even have a clue what that is. Kingdom purpose, what is, what is that? You see? Again, but, but if I asked you about your, your, your car, or I asked you about, you know, tell me what's good with your house, tell me what's good, you know, with your kids, you know, then you can, but then when I'm asking you about the king and the kingdom, you're like, well, praise the Lord. God bless you. I'm doing all right. Come on now, can we be real? Y'all know we keep it 100. Can we be real about that thing? You see, isn't that real talk? Yeah. Okay, see, watch this. Jesus called us to live a life of completeness and wholeness and wonders for which the Holy Spirit will provide for us on a daily basis. So if you want to be complete, if you want to be whole, if you want to be one, then let the Holy Spirit do his job and you submit to the one that's speaking in your heart. He is part of the Godhead, amen. And he is trying to get a job done in you, amen. But it's your job to make sure that you yield and you submit to that. Somebody say submit. Boy, we don't like that word now, do we? Not in this culture. Don't you dare tell me to submit who you think you are. And y'all know I done told you my many stories about having to struggle and deal with that. But that is the key to being, to, to, to having success, to having that completeness, to having that wholeness and the oneness is allowing the Holy Spirit to do what he does. See, it's the Holy Spirit, watch this, thank you, Lord. It's the Holy Spirit that knows the mind 
and the will and the prophetic purpose for our lives. So then why would you turn to something else other than the Holy Ghost? Because the money show ain't going to do it. The car show ain't going to fulfill your purpose. Your home can't fulfill your purpose. It's the Holy Ghost. That he's part of the Godhead. So he's going to go before. He's already gone before you and he knows the mind of God. That's why you got to submit to the Holy Spirit. Why block the Holy Ghost? Why block the one that knows the answers? The one that's supposed to be your guide. The one that's supposed to direct you. The one that's supposed to comfort you. That's the job of the Holy Ghost. But if I'm not submissive, then I'm going to miss the whole thing. You got to quit blocking the Holy Ghost. And submit. See, we, see, we get so caught, thank you, Holy. we get so caught up in everything else. And that's what the enemy wants. He's like, yeah, yeah, get that, get that money, get that house, get that car. Don't worry about, you know, don't worry about God. Or I'll tell you what, no, no, I'm not going to tell you not to worry about God. But just go to church on Wednesday. Or maybe just go to church on Sunday. And then, make, and then, and then read your Bible. Oh, no, no, don't even have to read it. Just bring it on Sunday with you so you can look like you have read your Bible. <laughs> Come on now. And the Holy Spirit, and, and I, I can imagine, uh, uh, th okay, thank you, Lord. Think about this. If someone broke into your home, grabbed your son or daughter, and began torturing them right in front of you, how excruciating inside you would feel. And you would probably give your, 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 your life to see that this child is relieved from his agony and his pain. But it's the same thing with the Holy Ghost every time we impede him. It's like you holding the stick and up a knife to him and he's, and he's agonizing and he's, in, and he's in pain because he knows the work that he's wanting to do. He knows that he can save you. He knows that he can get you to your next level. He knows that he can do some kind of supernatural work in your life and he's just sitting there agonizing, hurting. Just like you would if you were to see someone hold a child, or hold a knife or a gun, torturing your child. He agonizes. Think about that, y'all. He agonizes. And every time we don't obey, oh, why are you doing that? Oh, why did you say that? Oh, what? Why are you thinking that? He's agonizing agonizing in pain just yearning 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 for you just to submit yearning yearning and even Jesus as he was going uh, uh, through all the stuff that he was going through before he got on the cross he said father 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 if there be any other way Lord but nevertheless, not my will, 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 but thine will be done. Hallelujah. Amen. Is this helping somebody this morning now? Okay, now watch this, watch this, watch this. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 up there, please. Verse 5 through 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 5 through 11. And I'm going to let Miss Rachel read that, please. So that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, human philosophy, but in the power of God. Next. Yet when we are among the full-grown, spiritually mature Christians who are ripe in understanding, we do impart a higher wisdom, the knowledge of the divine plan previously hidden. But it is indeed not a wisdom of this present age or of this world, nor of the leaders and rulers of this age who are being brought to nothing and are doomed to pass away. But rather what we are setting forth is a wisdom of God once hidden from the human understanding and now revealed to us by God. 
that wisdom which God devised and decreed before the ages for our glorification to lift us into the glory of his presence. Amen. Amen. Uh, what, yeah, one more, please. None of the rulers of this age or world perceived and recognized and understood this. Mm -hmm. For if they had, they would never have crucified the Lord of glory. Amen. Okay, pause. we'll pause it for a second. Go back, go back, please, to verse 5, please. Go back to verse 5 and read that one more time for me, Rachel, please. So that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men. Pause. So that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men. You know, that, see, in this, in this last hour, folks, before Jesus comes back, man's wisdom, the word says, is, will increase. Knowledge will increase. Ways to do things will increase. But while they're trying to, thank you, Holy Ghost, that's good. While they're trying to increase, the Holy Spirit already got it all wrapped up. He's already there. He's already ahead of the wisdom of mankind. See, man is just catching up, but the Holy Ghost is already ahead. Right. Are y'all understanding that? Yes. Okay, go ahead, Rachel. Human philosophy. Human philosophy, but in the power of God. But in the power of God. See, again, and I know we keep coming back to this, but that's why I keep telling you why it's so important to yield to the Holy Ghost, amen? Because that's where the power is. That's where resurrection power is. That's where love power is. That's where peace power is. That's where healing power is, amen? It's all in the Holy Ghost. So that's why he said, that's why, thank you, Holy Ghost, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then, but see, we put the then first and then the seek after. And that's what's called the wisdom of man. Amen. Because if you were really wise, you would seek the one that already is ahead of man. That's right. And that's the Holy Ghost. Yeah. It don't mean that you never go, because think about it again. Look at all the different things that Paul went through. But you don't think that that man was Holy Ghost filled? And you don't think that that man operated in the supernatural kingdom power of the Holy Ghost? Amen. He sure did. But he relied upon the Holy Ghost to get him through those tough times. To get him through, amen. And when he preached, the power bound because he sought the wisdom of God and not the wisdom of man. Amen. But too many Christians I, I want, want the wisdom of man first. Because if you if you weren't worried about more what other people say and trying to do your own thing, then as, as opposed to seeking God and understanding what the Holy Spirit needs to say to you on a daily basis, we got to seek God every day. How you going to know what God says if you ain't seeking him? How you going to know? You're not going to know. That's why, that's why we have to be careful about this age in which we live in. Because the enemy is going to make that wisdom seem like it's profitable. Oh, I just, got, I just lost all my amens right there, Pastor. I just lost all my amens right there, Darren. He gonna make that wisdom seem profitable, but there ain't no power in it. Oh, oh, it might seem like that's the power, but it ain't no power in that because the real power comes from the Holy Ghost. The real power comes from above, amen? It ain't no power in that thing. The power is in Jesus, amen? The power is in the Holy Ghost, amen? Right, Mom? Amen? Okay. So the Holy Spirit is here to help us in our walk with God because he knows the mind of God. And, and, and once we walk with God, then there's certain paths that God wants us to take. Well, then why? Why did Paul have thank you, the Holy Ghost? Why did Paul had to take the kind of path that would lead him into a city, Darren, where they would actually stone this cat and then leave him out for dead? But watch this. He turned around and got right back up and went right back into that city. I said, oh, man, that, that, if that ain't no Holy Ghost power, because I know half the Christians, if you just say something about them, they ain't even coming back to church. 
Amen or oh me, one out the two. <laughs> Amen? Okay, 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 okay. So it took something. It takes that. And you're like, well, why am I not experiencing this, this, this power? Well, Willie, I feel, you know, I feel you, man, and I, and I hear what you're saying, and I, and, I, and I comprehend it. I want this. Well, then if you want it, seek ye first. Seek what you want. Now, I know me, if I go shopping, I'm seeking for something in particular. I'm searching for something in particular. And just like you search for them shoes, or you search for them clothes, or you search for that car, or that house, or whatever, more so with God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. More so with God, okay? I'm, try I'm trying to move up. Okay, so uh, turn, turn to, uh, up there, please, uh, Brother Charlie, to Psalms 23 and 3, please. And we're just going to go through a couple of Psalms real quick, and, uh, and then we'll move on. So we're talking about if, if we're going to fulfill this purpose, if we're going to fulfill the, the, the prophetic call, then what God's going to do is he's going to take us on certain paths. Amen? Okay, go ahead, Miss Rachel. Psalms 23 and 3. He refreshes and restores my life, myself. He leads me in the path of righteousness, uprightness and right standing with him, not for my earning it, but for his name's sake. Amen. Uh, Psalm 17, verse 4 through 5. Psalm 17, verse 4 through 5. And all of these will be coming out the Psalms, Brother Charlie. Concerning the works of men, mm -hmm. by the word of your lips, I have avoided the ways of the violent the paths of the destroyer. Mm -hmm. My steps have held closely to your paths, to the tracks of the one who has gone on before. My feet have not slipped. Amen. Psalm 16 and 11. Psalm 16 and 11. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. And then uh, Psalm 27 and 11. Psalm 27 and 11. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain and even path because mm. of my enemies, those who lie in wait for me. Mm. Did y'all hear that? Yeah. Mm. So teach me your way, Lord, because of my enemies who lie in wait for me. Yeah. Amen. And this is why we got to make sure that we're listening to the Holy Spirit every day, because the Bible says that the enemy comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. Amen. And so that's why when you get up and before I walk out that door, most of the time, unless I unfortunately sleep late, I got to make sure that I am in that word in the, in the morning. Amen. You got to make sure that you're decreeing and declaring and prophesying that word over your day. Amen. Because you don't know what's out there lying in wait for you, trying to destroy you, trying to kill you, trying to wipe you out, amen? That's why you got to know who you, you need to know that voice, amen? I need to submit to the Lord in the morning, amen? I need to call out his name so his name can go before me and make the crooked places straight, amen? Now watch this, watch this. Uh, Charlie, turn up there to Psalms 119. Psalms 119, starting at verse 26. Bless you. Is anybody getting something out of this this morning? Is this all right? Okay, okay. Psalms 119, starting at verse 26. I have declared my ways and opened my griefs to you, and you listen to me. Teach me your statutes. Next. Make me understand the way of your precepts. So shall I meditate on and talk of your wondrous works. Keep on going. My life dissolves and weeps itself away for heaviness. Raise me up and strengthen me according to the promises of your word. Mm -hmm. Remove from me the way of falsehood and unfaithfulness to you and graciously impart your law to me. I have chosen the way of truth and faithfulness. Your ordinances have I set before me. I cleave to your testimonies, O Lord. Put me not to shame. I will not merely walk but run the way of your commandments mm -hmm. when you give me a heart that is willing. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I will keep it to the end steadfastly. One more. 
Give me understanding that I may keep your law. Yes, I will observe it with my whole heart. Amen. So you see the desperate cry of David's heart. And you know, David went through some stuff, amen. But he constantly sought after the Lord. In his deepest hurts, in his deepest pain, in his highs, in his, he just kept running after the Lord. And because of that, that's why he was able to fulfill that prophetic purpose, his kingdom mandate here on the earth. Amen. And we have to do the same. Are you crying out to the Lord? Are you running after him day by day? Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Amen. Amen. Okay, 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 now watch this. Uh, turn, up, turn up there to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10. What we're going to do is we're going to look at a couple of characters whom God displayed his manifold wisdom. Everybody say manifold wisdom. Manifold. What the manifold wisdom is, is the multi-sided wisdom of God. And you'll never be able to catch it all because there's just so many sides to it. And, and what God did is, as he was displaying his wisdom, I like to call it that he displayed his iTunes. Ooh, iTunes, what is that? Okay, he displayed his infinite ver verity, which means seeing things from many sides, and then his immeasurable aspect. These characters that he worked his wisdom through was Jesus, Moses, and Joshua, okay? Jesus, Moses, and Joshua. And if you read Ephesians 3.10 before we get into it, please. The purpose is that through the church, the complicated, many-sided wisdom of God in all its infinite variety and innumerable aspects might now be made known to the angelic rulers and authorities, principalities and powers in the heavenly sphere. Amen. So it's the church. Think, think, think about what, read that one more time, Ms. Rachel, and listen to what the scripture is saying. Go ahead, Miss Rachel. The purpose is that through the church. Pause. Through the who? Church. church. Who? Through the who? Church. And who's the church? We are. We are. Go ahead, Miss Rachel. The complicated, uh -huh. many-sided wisdom of God mm. in all its infinite variety mm -hmm. and innumerable aspects. Right. Keep on. Might now be made known to the angelic rulers and authorities. Pause. Did y'all hear that? Thank you, Holy Ghost. The word says that we are surrounded by a great heavenly host. Amen. And there are angels. And I, and I can imagine, you know, the angels looking down and saying, now, Lord, you know, look at this Willie Tillman cat, man. I mean, look at this dude. You see this dude? What? What? And the Lord just says, but it's my grace and it's my mercy. And he loves me. So every time he speaks, he speaks of me. And it just baffles the mind of the enemy. It baffles the mind of Satan. It baffles the mind of depression. It baffles the mind of oppression. It just baffles the enemy's mind. But seeing how God can take one person and put his spirit in him and bless him and use him in a powerful way. Amen. But not just Willie Tillman, but the church, the church on display. Amen. That's the power of the church. Amen. The church is supposed to be displaying this type of power that makes the angels scratch their head, that makes the demons tremble. Oh, they're, they're getting together again. Oh, they're about to worship again. Oh, Pastor Bob's about to get up there and throw down on the word again. Oh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And it baffles them. Not only them, but it should baffle the world. The world that's looking in saying, now wait a minute, we done, we done took Job's car, we done took Job's money, we done took Job's children, we done put sickness and disease on Job, and yet he's still praising God, and he's still coming to church, and he's still raising up his hands, and he's still giving God glory? What is going on with that dude? Because it's the church on display, amen? And that's the power that we possess, amen? Come on, somebody say power. Say power. Power on display, amen? 
You possess that, amen. We possess that, amen. amen. But power is supposed to be displayed like bright lights. Yes. So is your light shining brightly or are you one of them little dimmer switch things then you're just kind of flickering along? Because y'all, y'all see the scripture, right? Yes. So you were supposed to be making the demons pull their hair out and be scratching, wondering, how is this dude doing what he's doing? And, oh, boy. Lord, you sure you want me to? Oh, boy. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He says, watch this. He just told me. He said, we're supposed to be putting on this. We're supposed to be on display before the demonic principality. Hours, right. Making them scratch their head and making them wonder what the world is going on. But for some of us. Them demons are applauding us. Go get them, girl. Yeah, that's how you talk about him. That's how you run him down. That's how you take his money. That's how you steal his joy. And the demons are right there applauding. Go get them, girl. We got your back. Because devil can bless you, too. You talking about it's God's blessing. That ain't no God's blessing. And if you ain't doing it God's way, it ain't no blessing. That's the devil. That's the devil right there. And you ain't going to tell me no different. Show me in the word. God will bless you. God wants to bless you, but you got to do it God's way. And if you're not doing it God's way, then you're fulfilling that wisdom of man that the word talked about. And no wonder why we're worldly, because we're, we're, we're all about the wisdom of the world. Well, you're going to act worldly if you think worldly. And when you think worldly and act worldly, you're going to speak worldly. And no wonder why we ain't getting no signs and no wonders. You leaving the angels up there wondering when you're going to get it right. Wondering when they're going to get it right. Wondering how many messages got to come forth. Wondering how many times you got to hear the preacher preach. Wondering how many stuff I got to keep trying to get on you about what getting it right. Well, well, Willie, well, Willie, I, I, I'm just not perfect. No, you're not. But that Holy Ghost inside you is perfect. Now talk about that. Put that on Facebook, dog on it. The Holy Ghost inside, the Holy Spirit inside you is perfect. That's how we be perfect. Amen. That's how we can act perfect. Through the Holy Spirit. But if you're operating on the wisdom of man and you're operating in worldly ways, you're not going to get the the results that you're looking for in your Christian walk. And you're not going to stay on the path of righteousness. You keep getting off the path. But God is trying to put you on the path so that you can fulfill your prophetic purpose here on this earth. Amen. Amen, Pastor. Is this all right, church? Okay, 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 okay. Okay, Uh, turn to uh, up there, please. John chapter 19, Brother Charlie. So now let's move into some of our characters here. And then, Charlie, we're going to start that roll in here in just a second, okay? So watch this, Uh, Miss Rachel, please. John verse uh, 19, starting at verse 15 through 18, please. John. John, cha- John chapter 19, and we're going to look at verse 15 through 18. J-O-H-N. Yeah, John. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. There we go. No problem, no problem, no problem. Not Josh. <laughs> yeah, that John. The other John. <laughs> right. John testified about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, Mm -hmm. he who comes after me has priority over me, Mm -hmm. for he was before me. Mm -hmm. He takes rank above me. Oh, is that the wrong verse? Uh, Verse 19. Oh. Verse 19. I mean, chapter 19, verse 15 through 18. Chapter 19. Let's go back. Sorry. Chapter 19, verse 15 through 18. But they shouted, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, crucify your king. Mm -hmm. The chief priest answered, we have no king but Caesar. Mm -hmm. Then he delivered him over to them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. 
So he went out bearing his own cross to the spot called the place of the skull. Mm. In Hebrew, it is called Golgotha. Yes. Mm-hmm. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side and Jesus between them. Okay. So, you, and we're all so familiar with this particular passage right here where they led Jesus. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, when they talk about Gagatha, I actually seen that when I went to Israel. So we got to see the place and it's, it's kind of faded out now, but you can actually see it uh, when you, yeah, yeah, go back, Charles. Okay, you got it. Okay, I'm sorry. And, and so you can actually see that Gagatha and it's really, really, it's really cool. But anyways, but when we look at the account of Jesus in the gospels, the word says that Jesus hung in between two thieves. Three men were on the cross, but God hung in the middle of them in between. Go ahead and roll that, Charlie. One thief recognizes that Jesus recognized Jesus as a man being punished, though he was innocent. But the other thief, go ahead, keep it rolling, Charlie, one more. There we go, pause. But that other thief wanted to be relieved of his punishment and cursed Jesus for not helping him escape the cross. The position held by Jesus, held by God himself, again, was in between. And this position plays a very important role in the lives of today's Christians. God placed Jesus, and Jesus was willing to be in between the thieves to die for this entire world. Amen? Amen. And these truths were prophesied from the days of old. So what Jesus did is, again, he fulfilled his prophetic uh, purpose. But watch this. The thief wanted to escape. I'm going to say that one more time. The thief wanted to escape his cross. Watch this. Watch this. Jesus said that we're supposed to bear our cross, not escape our cross. But some of us don't want to even pick up the cross. So how can you bear what you don't even pick up? Because Jesus said, watch this, I said this last time. He said that no man is above, no servant is above the master. Jesus showed us the way. He said that we would go through stuff. He said that we would go through things. And he said, but if you follow me, pick up your cross and follow me. Amen. You got to pick that thing up. But but see, the thing about it is, are you willing to count the cost? Are you willing to count the cost of the cross? Because it's a price to pay. See, see, you think, or people tend to think, that when preachers get up here, oh, they just got it so easy. All they got to do is just study the word, and all they got to do is just pray, and, and that's all they do. But see, you don't see the hell that the man and woman got to go through to get to be able to stand up here. We just don't get up here and run off at the mouth. There's hell that you got to go through, tears that you got to cry, laying out before the Father day in and day out, pulling, almost pulling your hair out, wondering how much hell you want me to suffer, Lord. But he says, son, this is why I called you to bear your cross. Daughter, this is why I called you to bear your cross. Are you bearing your cross? See, don't don't just walk out the door. Watch this. Just don't walk out the door and not spend no time with the father. Just think about it this week. How many times, how much time did you spend with the father before you walked out the, the door to go to work or walked out the door to go somewhere? How much time did you spend with your father? But then you say, yeah, I bear my cross. Well, you just left it at the house. You left it beside the bed. He said, pick up your cross and follow me. But don't be like the thief 
who wanted the relief of his cross. He didn't want to be on the cross, yet he was guilty and deserved to be on the cross, but he didn't want to be on the cross. And we're yet guilty, and, and we're yet, we, we should receive the punishment, but Jesus took that punishment, he bore our cross, and he just asked you to do the same. Pick up your cross and follow me. Amen? Amen. And so many people, they just don't want the pressure of bearing the cross. And I watched something on uh, Christian television the other day. Uh, they were talking about uh, Muslims who convert to Christianity and the hell that they got to go through, Ma. The price they got to pay. And then, and then, and then, and then, oh, this was, this was, this was so precious. This was, this was so precious, y'all. So they asked the brother, he said, why are you so happy? And the dude just started breaking down, crying. Because he said, when I was a Muslim, I wasn't experiencing joy. I wasn't experiencing happiness. I wasn't experiencing peace, Papa Rick. All I was was mean-spirited and wanted to hate and wanted to kill, Pastor. But he said, ever since Jesus has come into my life, Amen. there's been such a joy Amen. and there's been such a peace of mind and there's been so much happiness in my life. He said, no, no one's done that for me like Jesus. Amen. He said, so I'm willing to bear my cross. He says, I'm willing to proclaim the truth. He said, even if it costs me my life. Even if it costs me my life. But, you know, we're American Christians over here and, you know. We're rich and wealthy and blah, 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 blah. But are you willing to give your life? I ain't asking for an answer. You got to think about that. And you better be real with yourself and the fathers are watching you. Am I willing to lay down my life? I'm not saying be like Paul. I'm not saying be like Peter. I'm not saying be like Willie Tillman. You be you and bear your cross. But are you willing to bear that cross even if it cost you your life? Because it cost us our Savior's life. And many brothers and sisters across the water, they're giving up their lives freely for this gospel. But we get all upset if somebody talked bad about us on Facebook. <laughs> or somebody just sent out a Twitter about us. Instagram. Instagram. And we ready to nod up and ball up in the corner somewhere. And you got brothers and sisters over here being beheaded, being imprisoned, being beaten with rods, and, 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 not, and not giving up. Turning around, getting up, and going right back into place where they were just beaten. You got to have some Holy Ghost power to do that. You got to have some Holy Ghost power, Miss Rachel. That ain't no joke right there. That's real right there. That's real faith and real Christianity. And we got to stop thinking of American Christianity and think the cross. The cross. It's the cross, people. He gave it up for us, amen. And you mean to tell me you can't pick up your Bible once a week? Or pray? Or fast? We're living in a hellacious world right now, and it's getting darker. It's not getting lighter out here. We're the light. So how, how can we impact the darkness if I'm bringing darkness to the darkness? We're supposed to be the light, amen? We're the gospel lights, amen? You're supposed to light up the darkness. And I'm not trying to condemn anybody. I'm just show, telling you these are the truths of the word. Amen. Yeah. And y'all know my heart. Y'all been y'all know me long enough how we roll. I'm telling you the truth. This is the real gospel. And you're and I'm telling you, your faith will be tested. Yeah. And y'all remember the slogan now yeah. because T.D. Jake said it and I'm saying it and I'm telling you. If you want the touch, you better be prepared to pass the test. 
If you want the touch of the Holy Ghost and if you want Holy Ghost power and you want to operate in the supernatural, then you better be prepared for the test. Well, then I ain't going to school then. <laughs> Remember them kids say, I ain't going to school. Oh, you going to school. <laughs> Don't make me get that switch. Oh, I'm going to school now. <laughs> yeah, 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 we, hey, we don't want to be like Jonah. Thank you, Pastor. We don't want to be like Jonah. Y'all remember what happened to Jonah? Getting spit out and swallowed by a fish? Oh, Lord, I pray that never happened to me. I'm, I'm going, Lord. I'm for real. I'm going, Lord. I, I'll take my cross. Don't do me like Jonah, please. I don't want that. But see, but, 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 but watch this. When Jonah went through it and, and God finally humbled that man, and what happened? One man, oh, pastor, that's good. One man changed the whole city. One man preached the gospel and the whole city was changed. You tell me when the last time you went into some city, preached the gospel, and the whole city fell on their face before the Lord. <laughs> yeah, he was knocking them out with that funk, huh? <laughs> I like funk, but that ain't the kind of funk I'm talking about. <laughs> Get your funky self from out of here, boy. <laughs> I, since my mom's here, I got to tell this story, all right? So watch this. So uh, Ma, bought, I, I may have told this before, I don't know. But Ma bought me some new shoes, right? And, uh, and every time we go to our grandfather's house, you just don't sit in the house. You going to work. So, so granddad said, boy, what you sitting up in this house? You better get out here and work. So we working, right? And, he, and, he, and then he told me and all the cousins, well, y'all got to feed the hog. I said, granddaddy, you know, I got on these new shoes my mama bought me. Boy, you better get out there and feed them hogs. Yes, sir. So I'm feeding the hogs, the chickens. And then the last thing he said, well, y'all get out there and move the cow. I'm like, man, I don't want to go out there, man, all that cow mess, you know. So I'm tiptoeing, trying to be cool. I ain't going to get nothing on my shoe, right? And so they move everybody's, uh, so I'm like, since I was the big kid, I was on the end, right? So everybody's pulling, 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 you know, come on, Willie. And something spooked the cow. But I was looking the other way, holding the rope like this. And that joker ran and yanked me, and there was a big old pile of... I said, oh, man. My mama going to beat me. My mama going to beat me, my shoes, brand new shoes. So I said, I'm trying to wash the stuff. I'm going to the spricket, trying to wash everything off, wipe everything down. And we're driving home, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be, you know, sit as far back. You know, I'm, dry, I'm only in the back seat, but I'm trying to sit back as far as I can. And she said, what is that smell? What is that smell? And I wasn't saying nothing for a while. She said, somebody better speak up and tell me what's going on. What is that smell? Granddaddy <laughs> made me move the cow and I stepped the cow, dude, dude. And I tell you not to wear them new shoes anyway, try to show. Oh, boy. I had you. Oh, it was just, it was just uh, not a pleasant ride home. <laughs> but, you know, she did tell me not to wear my shoes. So, but I wanted to show off in front of everybody. Y'all know how it is. Okay, so anyways. Now, how did I get on that? I have no idea. <laughs> see, oh, y'all don't took me, y'all don't took me left, right. Y'all don't took me off my path, see? Y'all don't took me off path, and I'm trying to find my way back. <laughs> but, but anyways, but anyways, anyways, it's, it's amazing. So when we looked at these, these two thieves, one, again, recognized Jesus as Lord. The other one said, look, you know, I want to be relieved of my cross. Again, the position held by Jesus, held by God himself, was in between. Jesus died for each and every one of us in this room. And as by designed order, God displayed to mankind his manifold sovereign wisdom. Watch this. Go to the next one, Charlie. Thank you. Right there by positioning himself in between. Somebody say in between. in between. Aren't you glad 
that God decided to get into the middle of stuff? (laughs) Just when the enemy thinks he got you, God said, I'm going to step right in the middle. Just when that depression think that he done got you, Jesus said, I'm going to step in the middle. When sorrow is filling your heart and you don't know who to turn to, Jesus says what? I'm going to step in the middle, amen? And when you're broke as a joke and them bills got to get paid and you're wondering how them bills going to get paid, guess who's going to step in the middle? Jesus going to step in the middle, amen? Oh, I'm glad that he was willing to get in the middle of my stuff, amen? Somebody ought to give him some praise. Somebody ought to give him some honor. Somebody ought to give him some glory because he was willing to get in between your stuff. Hallelujah. Where would we be if he never got in between? Amen. Where would we be? And he displayed this to the world. Letting people know you don't have to face this cold, dark, lonely world by yourself. Because over 2,000 years ago, I came to this earth and I got in between. I got in the middle, amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a hand clap. Come on. Let's give God a hand clap, amen. All right, let me see if I can make make one more point and then... uh, we're going we're gonna to wrap it up. We're going to wrap it up. So, so watch this. So think about it. The God of the universe. The God who created the earth and the sun and the moon and the stars. But yet he's vast. But yet he's so intricate that he was able to get in between. He got in between, watch this, God got in between God and man. God got in between God and sin. God got in between God. Think of, think, I mean, just think about that statement. God got in between eternal life and eternal death. God placed himself right smack dab in the middle. And God purposed to place himself in that middle. In other words, again, God was willing to get all up at our stuff. Come on, amen. He was willing to do that, amen. Jesus torn down the middle wall that separated us by placing himself in the middle. He became the middle partition, connecting eternities as one man's eternal spirit back in the right relationship with an eternal heavenly father that's what happened when he was willing to step in the middle amen charlie go to that next one that blue one please watch this look at this look at this look at this thank you brother charlie doing a great job go to the next one charlie please in between in between in between Next one, Brother Charlie. He got in between, amen? There we go, pause. Now look at, let's look at this. Look at this. Here is the world. Here's Jesus right in the middle, and then there's God. What a perfect picture, amen? Amen. That's why when we talk about in between, how critical this is, that God was willing to do that for us. And that should let you know just how special you are. That he was willing to get in the middle, to cross the great divide by hanging on the cross. He crossed the great divide between God and man by hanging on the cross. Amen. And this is the message that we're to proclaim to this lost and dying world. Amen. 
that Jesus was willing, no matter even in your nastiness and even in your murderous ways and even in your lustful ways and perverted ways and all your kind of nasty ways, Jesus was ready to get in between. Go to the next one, Charlie. Thank you, Brother Charlie. You're doing a great job, sir. Pause, Charlie. In between. In the, oh, <laughs> okay, Holy Ghost, I got it, I got it. <laughs> In the beginning, God said, let there be light. He got up in the middle of your stuff and said, let there be life. Think about that. Let there be life in Shirley. Let there be life in Floyd. Let there be life in Miss Rachel. Let there be life in Miss Leah. Let there be life. <sighs> so he says, in order for me to give them life, I got to get in between. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. I am so thankful he got in between. I'm so thankful he got up all in my stuff. Amen. Oh, I'm so always oh, see and see and, and oh, thank you, Lord. That's why the Lord says the one who's been forgiven much loves much. Amen. You saw that woman. She came bowing down at the feet of Jesus and just wiping her, her, her his feet with her hair and putting that oil on him because she understood had not Jesus got in between my stuff, I still be demon possessed. Oh, I can talk about it now, Pastor, because had not Jesus got into my stuff, I'd still be depressed and in the bed. I'd still be fearful in the bed. I would never go out, even want to come out my room in the bed. But he says, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's my boy, Willie Tillman. That's my child. That's my girl. That's my daughter. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get in between. I'm going in between, devil, and it ain't nothing you're going to do about it, Satan. Nothing you can do about it, devil. And see, and, and, and this is what, and when we looked at that scripture, this is what baffles the angels. This is what baffles the angels of darkness. Because they're trying their best to get you not to fulfill the prophetic kingdom purpose in your life amen and they're trying everything they're throwing they're going all out trying to get you off track trying to get you off the way trying to get you for from not living the the truth of the gospel the truth of the scripture and when you think all is lost, when I thought all is lost, when someone thinks all is lost, just remember, Jesus says, wait a minute, devil. Wait a minute, Satan. Wait a minute, principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual hosts of wickedness in high places, princes of the power of the air and the chief prince of the power of the air. He said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get in between and I'm going to say, be Willie Tillman. Be my child, be my daughter, be my son, when he stepped in between. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Pastor. And it was his good pleasure for the joy. It was joy to Jesus because he knew what the outcome was going to be. It was his pleasure, Miss Rachel. His good pleasure that he would go to that cross. It was his good, think about it, when, 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 when on Palm Sunday, and think about it as a child. Guess who's coming to town? 
Pastor, who's coming to town? Jesus, he's coming to town. No, Mama, Jesus ain't coming. No, he's coming to town. Oh, oh, we got to get ready. We got to get ready. The Messiah's coming. The Messiah's coming. So they're all scrounging around. I don't know what they had to cut them, but they're cutting off palm branches. They're cutting them off. And, 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 and here, here, here he comes riding on, riding on that donkey. Riding, and, and they're all on both sides. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And watch this, and watch this. And he's riding that donkey right in the middle of them. Giving them just a glimpse of what's about to come. I'm riding in your presence now. But ne- when, when Friday comes, I will be hanging in your presence for you. It should have been you on that cross. It should have been you up there. It should have been me up there. I just, oh boy, Lord knows the kind of things I've done. I know I deserve to be up there. But he says, you know what, wait a minute, wait a minute. Even though I'm riding in between, I'm going to hang in between. Two thieves. Crosses. God placed himself there. Think about that, y'all. God placed himself there so, again, he can look at you and I and say, be, be, be. Whenever you're down, just look in the mirror and say, Willie Tillman, be. Rachel, be. My brother Spence, be. Mama Linda, be. Touch your neighbor and say, be. Come on. Touch somebody and say, be. Touch somebody else and say, be. 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 Because that's what he did. Amen? Woman of God, that's what he did over 2,000 years ago. Amen? So I'm going to wrap it up because y'all know, like a rapper, we can just keep going on and on and on. But... We'll finish, we'll, we'll work on more next week. But think about that. The great price that God himself did, what he went through for you and I, so that we, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost, I got it, so that we can live, so that we can be, and think about it. So, so if someone's telling you to live and someone's telling you to be, why aren't you being and why aren't you living? Do I need to say that again? Why are you not being and why are you not living when the Lord told you to be and live? It's because we don't believe. (laughs) It's because we don't believe. Because if you believe in something, you'll, you'll give your very breath for what you believe in. This is why the walk and the way is so important. Do you believe it? Because he believes in you. Because he told you to be when he hung on that cross over 2,000 years ago. Be my child. Be my son. Be my daughter. But do you believe? Be my church. Thank you, Pastor. We are the church. Be the church. And if any worldly wisdom of man tries to sway you to the left or to the right and try to get you off path, you say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. My Lord told me to be on that path, to be on that way. Because I know that if I go another way, then I'm getting off path. If I go another way, then I'm getting off track. And I can't be. And if you can't be, you can't fulfill that that kingdom purpose which God has for you and I. How can you do that? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Jesus said, no man can have two masters. 
Either you will love one or love the other. So who's your master? Mm -hmm. Unstable. And all your and that's and that's why we have to be as as the thank you Holy Ghost. We have to be as the church because he says where where if 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 you be the church, I'll command the blessing. Yeah. Amen, Mom. If you and I, if we be the church, God will command the blessing. And then we can say, well, you know what? I just experienced the supernatural power of God today, Miss Rachel. It's because I said, I be. And I believe. Because the word already told me, if you got the last message, about there is a purpose. There is a call on your life. But it's up to you to fulfill that. God ain't going to make you. He ain't going to twist your arm. He already did his thing. And he already told you to be. Come on, he already told you to be. So are you willing to, huh? Oh, good, Papa. That's why we're human beings. Amen? But are you willing to get in between? Carrying your cross, bearing your cross, and the world. Amen? This is serious, y'all. It's real serious. We're living in some serious times now, and it's getting crazy. Pretty soon, they're going to have this, uh, with this, this artificial intelligence and all this stuff that they're working on and, and going up to uh, uh, 4G, 5G, 6G, 8G. They go into all these Gs, and, and they're going to have robots walking around here with human skin. And they, see, the enemy has a plan, and, 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 and he's not stopping. See, when man thinks that they're coming up with all this creative stuff, and God is creative, and I mean, and some of it is good. You know, we can use something for good or for bad. You know, just like a gun. You can use a gun for good or you can use a gun for bad. Everybody's talking about that now. But the thing about it is, if, if, if the mindset is not being sifted by the Holy Spirit then they're just going to keep going further and further, keep coming up with all these different things. And watch it. You'll see down, walking down the street, you know, you're thinking it's a human, but it's actually a robot. This is where it's going. But the Bible already told us where this world is going. Amen? We know where it's going. And soon, our Savior, as we sang this morning, he's going to come back. And he's going to take home his bride. But until then, those that endure to the end shall be saved. Shall what? Be saved. So that's the word for the day in between. You got to think about it. Where am I in this word in between? Jesus already told you what he's done. And he was all in between. But where are you? How is your walk? Are you having daily fellowship? Are you having daily prayers? I'm not looking for answers. Just ask yourself. Am I really bearing my cross? Am I really being a light to the light, to the, uh, to the darkness? Or am I bringing more darkness and further darkness to the darkness? And not making any kind of difference? When you already had the prophetic word spoken over your life, as I said in the last message, before you were born, there was already a prophetic word spoken over your life. A prophetic purpose to be implemented in this earth through you as a Christian. It's up to you. Some people already made up their minds what they're going to do. What are you going to do? Because I, and I'm going to wrap this up. I believe, I, I believe it with my whole heart, Pastor. I, I've been praying. I believe that the glory of God's going to hit this city. 
I, I, I seriously believe it with every fiber of my being. And when that spirit starts moving and things start happening, I'm, I'm, and I know that there's several of us, and I hope we all say, we as a church want to be right smack dab in the middle of what God is doing when the Holy Ghost is being poured out in these last days. Amen? Amen. That's what we want. We want to be right smack dab in the middle of the supernatural. But watch this. See, I don't have to, thank you, Holy Ghost. I don't have to wait till the Holy Ghost be poured out to be supernatural. I can be supernatural every day of my life, amen? Because he told me to be. So if I'm going to be, I'm going to be supernatural, Miss Rachel. Why be anything else? I'm going to be, we should be supernatural. And, and when you have that attitude, I guarantee you, in some way, shape, or form, God will show you his supernatural power. Maybe just getting out the bed, that's the supernatural power. When you get 85, it's, it's, that's double supernatural. <laughs> but Amen. I want to see the supernatural power of God manifested in my life. I want to see the supernatural power of God influencing South Carolina, influencing Charleston, influencing Hanahan and Goose Creek and Latson and Somerville and Monk's Corner and Mount Pleasant and Charleston and North Charleston and James and Johns Island. The low country is the scope of the prayer. The low country. And we will see it. I'm prophesying that. We will see the glory of God. And my prayer is we as a church will be right there. I'm praying it's going to happen right here. <laughs> right here in Hanahan, South Carolina. The glory of God just show up and everybody's wondering what is going on in that little church in the bush out there in the woods in Hanahan, South Carolina. Well, we, be, oh, we became the church and now we're being supernatural as a church. Amen. We're being supernatural as a church because that's what God called us to be. Amen. Let's pray. Whoo, Father, Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the things that you have taught us in this house this morning, Father God. Lord, it ain't me. It's not by my might, and it's not by my power, but the truth of the word says it's by your spirit. And we thank you for your presence. Lord, there's such a powerful, I, I, I could just sense your presence so strong in this house, like Pastor said earlier. And I just, I just sense the power, Lord. I just sense your presence, Father God. And I, I, I just sense, Lord, that the, the hearts and the minds have received your word this morning, Father, and want to make a move towards being. Hallelujah, Lord. Because, Lord, you love us, Father. You love us so much, Lord. So much so that you gave your only son. You gave of yourself. And you came down to this earth to be with us, Lord. To save us of ourselves, from ourselves, Lord. And, Lord, we must admit, we, we know, Lord, we struggle. We got areas in our lives, Lord, that we know are not pleasing to you, Lord. We've said things, done things, acted certain ways, and behaviors that we know are not pleasing to you, Lord. So right here and right now, Lord, we want to make a declaration, Lord, that we want to be as you told us to. We want to bear our cross, even if that means my life. Even, Lord, 
And we know that's a bold statement, Lord, and maybe some may not be ready to make that statement yet. It might take them some baby steps. I don't know, Lord. You know each and every heart and mind in this house this morning, Lord, and you know exactly where we are. But I thank you, Lord, that you're such a gentleman and you're so intimate that you're willing to meet with us right here, Lord, that you're willing to come down this morning on this Palm Sunday 2018 to be with us, Lord, because you love us, Lord. Thank you. Lord, you have an investment in us. And Lord, we just want to say, here we are, Lord. Here we are, Lord. Here we are. Now, church, I know, y'all know me. I don't normally say anything unless I really feel the Lord is telling me to do this. But I just think, or I'm feeling led, I'll put it this way, that we as a church, we should get up, let's come to this altar, pray, some of you know what you need to pray about and for, and then we'll have the man of God speak a blessing over us. So I'm not forcing you to, but I'm just saying, if that be you, let's come forward. Let's get on our faces before the Lord. See, this is, this is, see, that's how it was when I was a kid. We used to come to the altar and as a church, and we used to get on our knees and get on our face before the Lord. We don't